welcome all our viewers to the episode 2 of the Testimony of Saints. In this episode we deliver the testimony of our late Associate Chief Pastor C. John. He was the Associate Chief Pastor during the period from 1973 to 1977. Born to Hindu parents, he studied in Jaffna and went through training college and became a teacher. As a youth he was a zealous Hindu, accompanying his father to worship in the temple. He took up to teaching and was finally a headmaster of a government school. He became a Christian and was married in the church. He was married according to Christian rites. He was married to a pious and religious girl, coming from an orthodox Christian family. From then on they both were in search of deeper truth. He searched the scriptures daily and studied the word. God most wonderfully spoke to him through visions and he was led to Pentecostal faith. He and his wife looked water baptism and trusted the Lord for divine healing. He labored for the Lord during his spare time and led souls into salvation. Most of his holidays was spent with the servants of God, laboring for his master both in the cities and villages. He had two sons who also were brought up in the same faith. At this stage his wife fell ill and finally went to be with the Lord. After some time, he entered into full-time ministry with his two sons forsaking all according to Luke 14. 26-33 He labored for some time in Colombo, in the fellowship of Pastor Paul, the founder of Ceylon Pentecostal Mission, now TPM, his contact with him gave him a good training and equipped him for the ministry that was ahead of him. He also taught in the faith school. At this stage his younger son died. These things did not deter him from going forward in the faith but spurred him into greater activity for the Lord. He labored in various parts of Ceylon. The final station in Ceylon was Jaffna. There a great revival broke out during his ministry and the church steadily he, with the help of others, organized systematic evangelism in the islands around the Jaffna Peninsula. God blessed the ministry. Then in 1950 B was sent to work in Madras and the following year he was ordained a pastor. When he came over here he continued his good work and started to know the people and became a zealous contender for the faith once and forever delivered to the saints. God gave him a greater light and a deeper revelation on Zion and New Jerusalem. This had been his favorite subject to the end. He would always talk about the order of Melchizedek and this was his burden all through his ministry. He set an example by his own consecration of forsaking all, hating all carnal ties, selling all and laying at the apostles' feet. This he did even at the beginning of his conversion, when he consecrated his wife's jewelry to provide the servants of God with a vehicle, which they needed so badly. His way of life was so simple and humble so that all, rich and poor, young and old, low and high were able to approach him. He always had a word of comfort for everyone. He had a wonderful memory. He could recognize anyone and recollect all about them. To him the converted and the unconverted were precious. He was generous and helped people in need. He became a father to many. He truly gained the worthy name of, Ia, from all. During his ministry in Madras the church went through a general time of trial, when there was much misunderstanding and confusion. God, however, through the cooperation and labor of Pastor A.C. Thomas and Pastor John, brought the church out of the storm. From then onward they unitedly worked in India looking to the welfare of the entire work. To him every church was his every member was his concern. He labored in Kerala and Madras and drew the hearts of many to the Lord. In his last stages, when he was losing his health and his sight, his desire and burden was to write and leave in print, some of the truths God had revealed to guide the forthcoming generation. He would always encourage the younger generation to minister the word and teach the doctrines boldly, and live out their lives faithfully. He had, several times, survived severe carbuncles. Even in his weakness he decided to go to Kerala to be present at the workers' and pastors' meeting held in November. Those meetings were a great blessing. He harped upon the words of Jesus, I will not leave you comfortless, because I live ye shall live also, not forgetting to lay stress on the vital subject of Zion and Jerusalem. He preached it, taught it, prepared himself for it and has gone to inherit the place he longed for. 
He knew his end was near when the final boil came up in November. He would often say, let me go, God will carry on the work with you all. He was happy to see his son, during his illness who rushed from Sri Lanka. He advised him not to forsake the way of Zion, but to go on with the Lord, he encouraged him and blessed him. By January his condition deteriorated and on the 13th of January at 2 a.m. in the midst of prayers, praises of the saints, he departed to be with the Lord, whom he loved and served so dearly. One would say, what William Tyndale was to England, Pastor C. John was to Ceylon and India. Pastor C. John was a true Christian hero. Heroic in truth, is an appropriate epithet for his noble character. One feels instinctively that he was no ordinary commonplace man, no more scholar or active energetic priest, no shrewd man of the world, but was ignorant as a child of the ordinary arts by which favor is propitiated and popularity so frequently won. His simplicity, his earnestness, his noble unselfishness, his love for truth, his clearness and force of mind, his invincible energy and power, these mark him out as a true hero, one of those great men, specially raised up and qualified for a noble task, whose lives always constitute a landmark in the annals of human history. Being dead yet speaketh, Hebrews 11, 4.